Oh, that bit was cool. Yeah, so today we're looking at the Sony Xperia Pro. Hi. Very, I'm very lucky to have this. I don't think there's many people who have, well, there's plenty of people who've had it. But uh, yeah, apparently it's a prototype. But we've come out to test this because this is very fancy. Why? Because it's got a one inch sensor. What? Huge. What? What? Well, somebody else that did that before. Yeah, okay. Panasonic, Sharp. I think Sharp has done it before, haven't they? They fit an RX107 innards, Whoa. the sensor within. How is that possible? I know, how is it possible? And Sony's done it. This is gonna change the world of photography forever. The preaching. Oh. While you're up there, a short message. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. All right, let's get back down again. Compact cameras, mm -mm, no more. See, it, just doesn't, it still doesn't focus. Exactly. <laughs> It, it, it's thinking, oh no, it's a Sony, I don't want to focus on that. Oh, finally. Probably myth that people only pay attention when Sony does something that they did ages ago. Three lenses and then a whatever sensor thing. Probably like laser guided focus or something. Yes. Interestingly, they don't put one inch inside. <laughs> Interestingly, they don't put anything here. They don't say, oh, massive sensor within. They don't even put the focal lengths, so I wonder why that is. Put size twice and Tessa T asterisk. You're probably looking for the asterisk somewhere here. Like when you read in an article and it's got an asterisk. It's like, what does it mean? Wow, it's either a really small go-kart or he's cutting the grass. No, it could be a remote control car. Really? That's, that's old school. Oh, it is. So let's confront him for being on our track first, but then allow him because uh, we're kind. That's got a proper engine in it. That, yeah. is, that is enough to take down a small child, I think. Ooh. Ooh. So I've got this on a burst mode now. The 20 FPS burst mode is like the Xperia 1 3's. Focus feels quick as you'd expect from a Sony. But like tracking, do track it, it's quite a small, quite a small object. Whoa! Look at that, tracking, tracking works really well. Oh, that smell. The burst, burst mode. I mean, it's hard to know, even if this, this is doing anything. This is completely silent. I think it's silent anyway. Oh. It's a bit like the Z9, completely silent, so you don't really feel like it's doing anything unless you look at things like the AF squares. I mean, looking at the photos, it seems to have done a decent job, but at 24mm, even on a 1 inch sensor, a lot of it is in focus anyway. I have to say though, the 4K video quality is good. The stabilization works really well, like to the point where you think, why can't they get their proper camera's stabilization to be this good? I was talking to Locke a few days ago, so I said, I want to take autumn colours. And they still look great, the trees were like, the golden and red. In two days, it's suddenly winter. <laughs> Barren. So yeah, anyway, 20 FPS. Just that burst right there. Impressive. And it doesn't make any noise at all. So you don't realize it's take, taking 20 shots. Let's, uh, let's have you as a filler. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Like, give me a Chris Nichols pose. Okay. <laughs> Hello, DP viewers. This is a Panasonic S5. <laughs> Eye focus is working well. But this is a 24mm focal length, so everything is kind of pushed back. You mean the main camera is 24mm? Yeah. Millimeters. Yeah. That's the only one with the one inch sensor. Yeah, the other ones are just the same as the other Xperia Pro. Looks pretty good. But everything looks good on this screen. It's a nice screen, isn't it? 6.5 inch screen. It's not just a screen, the still photos do look good. You can take raw photos, but the image processing produced JPEGs with plenty of dynamic range and details to make for a photo that you'd be happy to chuck onto Insta. You can pose next to the hut. So after we're making a joke out of Tony, and now we uh, do it with uh, Chris. We're cool with all of them. To be honest, I didn't say anything about his off, off center alignment. It was you. 
Was it? Yeah, probably. Way, yeah. way back in Digital Rev. Okay, let's add some bokeh. But, it, but it's funny, isn't it? Yeah, he does like leaning. Anyway, forget about the leaning for a minute. Photos have a good amount of detail. Shame about the awful focus bokeh though. Aperture, f2, f4. Oh, wow. You can see it. Look at that. It's clever, isn't it? Samsung probably did it like five years ago. Yeah, they've probably got 16 bladed apertures and it goes all the way down to F16 probably. This one is F2 or F4. You've got two choices, but that's fine. But just now when I was holding that, I was thinking, hey, how can I, why can't I change it? It's because I was actually pressing the shutter button, which is here. They've got a shutter button. It's rougher. It's rougher feeling than the other ones. So you know it's a shutter button. But I accidentally pressed it when I'm holding it like this, which you probably will when you're holding a phone normally like this, unless you hold phones like that. But it feels quite good. I mean, the side of it is not too slippery. It's got a similar kind of RX Zero body. I was on basic mode at a minute. We don't want basic. What do we want? Pro. Pro. Okay, it's not called Pro. Complex. So when you, when you change it to one of these modes, whoa, the screen all of a sudden looks just like an alpha camera with all of these settings here. Like with the fancy user interface on the camera apps of the Xperia 1 Free and Pro, it makes it feel more alpha-like, like a proper camera, even if it isn't. Let's see if it'll track you. Oh, it loses you when... Okay, it's picked you up again. It doesn't understand backs. This is, this is... Ow. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty good, the focus is good. But I always have this question that does it really matter on a phone? I don't think so. When the depth of field is so yeah. deep, well, we, compared to a camera. I mean, this is an F2 now. I'm really close up. That's, that's how much depth of field there is. I think it's a lot of uh, kind of marketing, really. It's got the same autofocus as your Alpha 7. That perhaps is not the biggest thing to worry about, though. They've got the fancy camera app with all these settings and stuff like that. And now they've got a fancy one inch sensor. But the only problem is they don't use the whole one inch sensor. Let's go home. Hang on, what does it mean? They have the one inch sensor and they use just a portion of it. So it's got the RX107 innards, the sensor, but they just use a smaller portion of that one inch sensor. When they told me about this phone, uh, one inch sensor, I was like, I mean, what? Then the lens has to be massive. And I said, no. I'm like, hang on, that doesn't sound right. I mean, such a small lens on the one inch sensor don't think that's physically possible. Yeah, it's because this lens doesn't cover a full one inch sensor. If you were to show the whole sensor, there would be like a circle, right? So why use a one inch sensor and then crop it? Well, apart from the fact that, yeah, it sounds good when you say one inch sensor inside a phone. Also, it's a 20 megapixel one inch sensor and they're using a 12 megapixel crop from that. So pixel density is lower. Therefore, it should be better in low light, in theory. I mean, in terms of the actual size it's using, it's bigger than an iPhone, but similar to something else. I wonder what? Well, if you don't know what phone it is, maybe you could try Googling it. I guess it could be this dusty thing. <laughs> That's my pocket dust. Oh, yeah, look at that. Uh, I think the pixel is a bit bigger. Oh, it doesn't have a headphone jack. Oh no! The Google one is looks a bit more basic. I guess it's meant for, you know, everybody to understand. Of course you've got basic on there, here, but when you switch it to non-basic, those settings don't rotate. But the question is, similar sensor size, which one's sharper? So look lean up against something like Chris Nichols again. It's interesting. I'm going to choose... So auto. That looks quite... It's a bit blue, isn't it? What if there's a face? I mean, some AI, it do better skin colour when, when there's a face, then it can recognise 
white balance better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Pixel has nicer colours, but I do hope the Xperia Pro I has better auto white balance on the final release because colours were looking a little off sometimes. It has to be noted that this Xperia Pro I is a pre-release unit. I'm only limited to access to one lens too. Considering the difference in specs, noise performance isn't all that different. The Pixel 6 has some insane processing, almost too much for dynamic range, and the high megapixel count, unsurprisingly, does give it slightly sharper details. It's also got the video we go video pro so you've got cinema pro which is kind of like your xperia pro it's it's supposed to make it like a their high-end cine cameras this one is is more like an alpha camera but when you hit record and stop it's the same sound which that still bugs me because actual sony alpha would have different sound Dun -dun -dun. And it's got a little red dot there but you know that's not really wow. big enough is it <laughs> Death. So yeah, you can set a number of settings there, or oh, HDR. Oh, okay. Okay, stabilization on the video light on. Oh, okay. I think the stabilization is pretty good, good on this. It's probably better than an RX100 for stabilization. <laughs> better than Sony camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you hope that, I mean, the only problem, oh, what's the light? Oh, I switched off. That's the trouble, isn't it? It's too many buttons. The trouble is, I mean, the problem I find with the RX100 is that 24 millimeters, it's not wide enough for vlogging. I guess it's, it's usually just about all right. I can't actually see anything, but if you're going to be using a one inch sensor, you might as well flip it around like this. I actually think this could be a great phone for taking video with a fantastic stabilization and the excellent 4K video quality. They're even gearing it up for vloggers with a quirky vlogging screen thing. But there's not much point testing it much further with the limitations of a pre-production unit. Still, for stills, the one inch sensor has kind of hyped up the expectations a bit too much. The reality is that for phones, processing is every bit as important as the basic hardware. As the Sony is obviously aiming this at photo enthusiasts, people who are already alpha users. For them, it offers a lot. Not that I've been able to test the complete package. So I guess for now, I'll just have to wait and see for final firmware to properly test out the Xperia Pro I. But otherwise, one inch sensor camera in smartphones sounds good. It sounded good. It could have been great. The Xperia Pro I could have been a no brainer, but instead, it's having to explain why having a cropped one inch sensor would still be beneficial over the competition. And that's perhaps a tad too far for many smartphone users to really bother looking into. And just before we get to the end of this video, I want to talk a little bit about Skillshare. If you want to fill your head with useful stuff and learn some new skills, then you might want to check them out. They've got some superb classes, now including ones such as MKBHD's fantastic guide on how to get going with YouTube. Now, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium so you can explore your creativity and enjoy unlimited learning and creative exploration. Link is down below in the description box. Thanks for watching. See ya, bye bye.